to a world of cycling. And right now, we are in Store, Store Manila in Greenfield District, Mandaluyong City. The pandemic has truly created this euphoria for cycling or biking. Did you know that many of the fitness fanatics out there who are locked out of gyms suddenly turn to biking for their daily dose of exercise? The commuters who are fearful of public transit have to settle for a bike to go to work or to reach their destinations. Families and children who are too bored staying home found themselves enjoying biking together in parks. Not at your best? You may be dehydrated. You need to carry sweat. It replaces the electrolytes you've lost and helps you perform at your best. Be at your best with Pocari Sweat. Pocari Sweat. Before we meet up with our first guest of today's episode, let's listen to Cuento Mi Sport of Commissioner Kiran. German na si Baron Karl von Race. Ang unang mechanically propelled bicycle ay naimbento noong taong 1839 ni Kirk Patrick McMillan, isa siya ang Scottish blacksmith. Panahong early 1860s, isang Frenchman ang nag-design ng bisikleta na may mechanical crank drive ang pedals. Ang harap na gulong ay mas malaki kaysa sa gulong sa likod. Nagkaroon ng mass production ng ganitong bisikleta taong 1886, inalabas itong Rover Safety Bicycle sa isang British Museum. Ito ang pinakaunang modernong bisikleta. Taong 1888 naman, isang Scotsman na si John Boyd Dunlop ang gumawa ng pinakaunang pneumatic car at naging popular ito. Ito ay larawan ng mga kababaihan na sakay sa bisikleta sa Amerika noong late 19th century. Taong 1888, pinagurian ang Rolling Bicycle Company sa England na siyang pinakamalaking bicycle manufacturing company sa buong mundo. Alam niyo ba na kagawa ito ng higit 2 milyon na bike kada taon at ang bicycles at horse buggies ang unang pribadong transportasyon bago lumabas ang automobile. Diyan nagwawakas ang kasaysayan ng bisikleta. Muli, ito ang inyong commissioner ka na na walang sawang naghahatid ng kwentong kababaihan, kwentong para sa kaalaman at karunungan sa sport. We heard that this pandemic has created a boom in bicycle business unseen in decades. Let's see if this is true from no less than the expert in cycling and bicycles, Mr. Jeremy Go, the owner of this very promising proud drawing bike shop. Hi Jeremy, the team of Rise Up and Shape Up is here to catch the basic things that we need to know and the rest of the public about cycling. So, but before we go to that, 
please give us a 101 on bike parts and for those who are not yet into biking, can you give us a quick explanation on how it goes? Okay, so a question I always get asked is, what kind of bike should I buy and how do I know how much to spend for a bike? Okay, so like I mentioned before, we're a, we used to be known as a very high-end bike shop. So something like this, for example, is a very high-end road bike. You know it's got um, carbon fiber frame, carbon fiber wheels, um, Dura-Ace electronic. I don't know if you can hear that, but you can see how the, the shifting is not done by cables anymore, but by electronic. So this would be a, the kind of bike that you would buy um, as a recreational bike. You know, somebody who wants to get into the sport. This is not really a bike that I would um, suggest for someone who's just starting out or someone who wants to use it for commuting or that sort of thing. So another kind of bike that um, you may know is what's known as the mountain bike. So these are two different kinds of mountain bikes that I want to talk about because I want people to understand what they're paying for and what the differences are. So number one is the frame. As we mentioned, this is the frame. There's different kinds of materials. Now I won't get into too much detail because there's a lot of things you can look at well, in terms of frames, including the kind of welding, in terms of the kind of tubing. But the main difference that you could probably see at certain price points is if the material is aluminum or if the material is steel. But steel frames are less expensive. They're a little bit heavier. And the downside is they have more of a tendency to rust, meaning that you need to take extra care of it to ensure na it doesn't rust. On the higher end, there's also carbon uh, mountain bikes, but most entry-level people will not be starting out with a carbon mountain bike. Another thing that you can look at is the fork. So this is known as a rigid fork. There's no suspension. And then this is known as a suspension fork. So it'll give you a little bit of comfort. And then actually, if you go off-road, it, it gives you more control because a rigid fork will be very bouncy. Um, another thing to look at is the kind of brakes, right? So this one is a disc brake. So it's a stronger brake versus a rim brake here, right? Um, and then uh, the drivetrain, of course, there's many different brands. Um, usually the higher end ones would be Shimano or SRAM, the brands that are well known. Um, but the thing that you can, I guess, if you're not looking at brands, the thing that you can look at is what's known as the shifting. So the, le the less expensive bikes, the more affordable bikes, they have um, non-index shifting. Um, hindi siya nagla-lock versus yung ganito. See that? You can hear. So it's easier to, easier to use rather than pulling. So those are some of the things that you can look at in order to see why this bike, for example, is 60,000, and then this bike is about 30,000. A few other bikes that we want to look at, and one that's very popular right now, is known as the folding bike. As you can see, it's a fairly light bike. Um, something like this will set you back about 12,000 pesos. You and maybe your wife can have each one of these. Two of these will fit into a rather sizable trunk and then you can go bike somewhere, right? So how does a folding bike work? Um, there are many different mechanisms for folding bikes, but this particular one, it opens up this way. And just put that aside right there. And then lock that in place. You will see that there will be a lock to ensure that it does not accidentally open when you don't want it to. Then again, the lock to ensure it doesn't open up. The seat post, pull that up to the height that you want. And there you go. Now you can go cycling. Um, as I said earlier, these ones use, a, well, it's a different kind of shifter, but it's still a Shimano shifter. This known as a grip shifter. Unlike earlier where you could see the, the, thumb, the thumb shifter. But it still works on the same principle. You can still have the derailers there. 
Okay, so that's a that's a folding bike, and it's also a very very good option, especially for people who are commuting. This one is actually one of my favorite kind of bikes, and this is known as a balance bike, a pedal bike for kids. Um, if you must know, they actually also make a model for adults, for adults who don't know how to bike. Um, I don't have any in stock right now, but they actually do make um, with bigger wheels. Uh, the idea of this bike is that kids will start to use it as a, like I guess a toy, so they can start pushing themselves along and learning how to balance. And you, you can see why they have this, parang, I guess ledge here. So as the kids get used to it, um, and I know this because my nephew loves his uh, Strider, they can put their feet there and just coast along. And then eventually, they'll, they'll learn how to balance, and then they learn how to ride the bike. And they even have races for these kind of bikes, which is, which is really, really fun. So um, I guess what we're trying to say also is there's bikes for every age, and then there's bikes for every kind. So there's no reason for you not to get on a bike because I'm sure that you will find something that suits your lifestyle, your needs, and even your price point. Well, in terms of demographics, I really can't speak for a lot of the other bike shops. But here at Stork, I guess our specialty was really high-end bikes. But with the pandemic and especially with a lot of events being canceled, a lot of races, um, a lot of our clients, they're holding off on buying new bikes. So, so what we've had to adapt by offering, uh, I guess, lower-end bikes to walk-in clients that uh, previously was not part of our business plan. Now that we've discussed about your business, can you please give us a few tips on road safety, especially for those who are in the entry level of biking? Okay. Um, so a lot of people who are buying bikes right now are using it to commute. So the main thing is that it's urban commuting. So if you're biking in the city, please be aware that um, the visibility of a person on a bicycle is not the same as on a car. And somebody driving may not see you mm -hmm. as well as they would see a car. And the main difference between you and a pedestrian, a pedestrian is usually on the sidewalk, it's not, in the, it's not sharing the road with a car. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, but um, let's say that you have the right of way, yes. right? But if a car hits you, yes. talo ka pa rin eh, right? So always be extra careful, always yield to cars if alanganin, di ba? If you think that it's not going to go your way, don't try. That's number one. Situational awareness is very, very important. Um, and then number two is having the proper safety gear. A helmet is very important. Now, a lot of people tell me that helmets are expensive. Yes. That is true, but also not so true. Because they have many levels of helmets. There are entry-level helmets you can buy for 500, 1,000 pesos, all the way up to, of course, 20,000 peso helmets. So what's the difference, some people asking me? Um, is a cheaper helmet less safe? That's not necessarily so. Okay? Because a quality helmet, even if it's an inexpensive helmet, will have a safety rating. The main thing that makes a helmet expensive is that the material they use mm -hmm. makes it lighter and more vented. More comfortable as well. More comfortable to wear on the head, exactly. So those are more expensive. So if you notice, the less expensive helmets, they're normally bulkier, they're bigger. Mm -hmm. Because to make up for the fact that their material is less expensive, they make it thicker and bigger. Mm -hmm. So your downside is, okay, it may be a little heavier on your head, it may not fit as well, but it's still a safe helmet. So don't think to yourself na, I don't want to buy the cheap helmet, it's not safe anyway. But as long as it's properly rated, get yourself the helmet. This is very important. Number two is lights. I've noticed a lot of people, they ride at night. So they're very inexpensive lights that you can buy for maybe 500 pesos front and rear. It may not be the brightest, but it's better than nothing. So those are the things that I can see right now. Um, and then, yun nga, in addition to situational awareness, I notice a lot of people are wearing headphones mm -hmm. when they bike. That may not be the best decision mm -hmm. because it, nga, it impedes your situational awareness. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it impedes your attention span as well. Yes. Uh, 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 so those, those things I think are important. Um, 
another thing, um, pag yun mga weekend bikers naman, the ones who like to go, I noticed that if you go to Tagaytay, you go to Rizal, maraming recreational, always um, be, always know where you're going, always have extra um, tools, like extra bottom bracket, those are, uh, extra uh, tubes, not necessarily bottom bracket, extra tubes, that sort of thing, pag naflatang ka, so you don't get stuck out in the middle of nowhere. And then, always hydrate, bring water, or bring money so you can buy. Um, and don't go beyond your limits. Diba? Kasi mahaba, you, we want you to be in the sport for a very long time. We want to avoid unnecessary injuries. Yes. Uh, uh, uh. Thank you so much, Jeremy. That was very educational and it certainly helped the public to learn the basics of road safety and the basics of bike parks. Thank you, Mr. Jeremy Goff, for sharing your knowledge about bicycles and this current craze on cycling, especially now during this pandemic. Meantime, we are very happy to have here with us a lady cyclist who has gone through a lot of fun and challenges as a cyclist. She was a gold medalist in the 2015 SEA Games and she never stops racing for fun and competitions. A student of dentistry and currently into business while still giving our country honors as a member of the Philippine National Pool in Cycling, let's welcome Miss Marelia Salamat as she opens her storybook to share with us her journey as a child, a student, a cyclist, and a young entrepreneur. Hi, I'm Marella Salamat. I grew up in Las Piña City. I was born to Engineer Rod Salamat and Dr. Marie Vic Salamat. I have two brothers and I'm the eldest of three children. I had the full support of my parents in terms of education and sports. Father ko ang nag-introduce sa akin sa world of sports kasi uh, for him, um, sports is a way of disciplining us as children. Tapos, my first sport was not really cycling. It was bowling. I have played this sport my whole life. So, medyo baguhan lang ako sa cycling in the year 2013. I entered this because I wanted to be physically active without thinking of my diet, gano'n. So, uh, what I think about kapag nagko-compete ako is I always think na pare-pareho kami ng pinagdadaan ng training and then what gives me inspiration really is the time that I allot sa pagte-training na dapat sana magbubunga. Yung pinagdadaanan ko ngayon sa before actually, sa family ko, was I had to stop um, studying to give time for my sport. So yung mom ko, hindi talaga siya pabor sa pagiging athlete ko because um, she really wants me to finish dentistry. This is the course that she chose for me na hindi ko naman talaga pinili for myself before but I had to do it because uh, she wants me to finish it. So, medyo nagkaroon kami ng mga arguments ganoon before. Tapos, yung, yung maibabalik ko lang sa kanya was to show that uh, worth it yung sacrifices ko. And sacrifices rin niya to allow me to to um, push through with this with the sport. So, with that inspiration, yun yung ginagamit ko as a tool para ma-achieve yung mga dapat kong ma-achieve sa mga competitions ko. Um, after the victory that I have accomplished and ayun, uh, syempre, shinare ko naman siya with my family and I'm very happy naman na masaya sila para sa akin. Um, I saw my mom, she was very proud of me. Tapos, uh, when I won the 2015 SEA Games in Singapore, uh, when I won the gold medal, my mom and my dad put up this victory party. Kaya yun alone, it showed me na masaya sila sa ginagawa ko. They finally saw that um, I was very passionate with what I was doing. And then, ayun, masaya naman ako na nasusuportahan ako ng parents ko ngayon. I am very thankful to my father for introducing sports to me kasi um, lalo na dito sa cycling. 
Although hindi ko siya masyadong kasama sa cycling, ako lang ang nagbabike sa pamilya ko. Sports has really made me uh, mature. It has molded me to become a person na positive. It has made me humble and um, someone na may na alam na kahit gano'ng kahirap yung pinagdadaanan mo, meron ka pa rin patutunguhan. Kasi um, right now, with me being in cycling, tapos ako mabalik na rin sa, sa dentistry to finish what I have what I have left. Um, Siyempre, mas naging focused ako. Tapos yung, yung kahit hindi ko siya talagang gusto, uh, pero kailangan ko marating yung yung dapat na kayo something to make my to make my mom happy yun yung nakikita ko uh, parang inspiration to go through the challenges in life my tips for the growing cycling public of course um, dapat i enjoy lang natin yung ginagawa natin and always have fun never never uh, get disappointed if hindi natin ma, ma- reach yung gusto natin makamtan at one point if if let's say um hindi natin maklaim yung certain hill or uh hindi natin matapos ang isang session kasi um we always have to take things slowly and be patient we always have to enjoy what what we're doing and of course everything else will follow parang Parang uh, sa buhay lang, if if mas hasa sila sa, sa buhay, if mas una silang naging successful sa buhay, then biglang nag-sports or sa mga kabataan na nag-sports, tapos mahasa pa lang sa buhay, parang pareho lang naman yung pagtanaw ko sa, sa sports and sa buhay. If we take things slowly in sports, everything else will follow. Pareho rin naman po yung sa real life. And of course... If we do reach that point when we win, never forget where we started and who helped us get there. And uh, lastly, dapat um, bike safely lang. Halina't kilalanin natin ang Pocariswet. Nagsisimula ito sa kamanghamanghang kwento ng ating katawan. Anim na po ng ating katawan ay binubuo ng likido. Nawawalan tayo ng halos dalawa at kalahating litrong tubig sa ating katawan araw-araw. At napapalitan nito sa pag-inom ng kasing dami ng nawalang likido upang mapanatili ang balanse nito sa ating katawan. Kung masira ang balansing ito, napapasama ang ating katawan. Bilang pagsaalang-alang dito, sapat na ba sa ating katawan ang pag-inom lamang ng tubig? Kapag uminom ka ng tubig, pansamantalang mapapawi nito ang iyong uhaw. Ngunit ang ating katawan ay magkakaroon ng reaksyon na maglabas ng likido dahil nais nito na ibalik ang balanse ng serum na lumabnaw sa pag-inom ng tubig. Tinatawag natin itong voluntary dehydration. Kaya inire-rekomenda ang pag-inom ng pokari sweat na may komposisyong kahalintulad ng sapawis. Matutulungan nito ang iyong katawan upang mabilis na makabawi mula sa dehydration. Maaari na ba natin pag-usapan ng tungkol sa ion supply drinks? May tatlong aspekto na dapat tingnan upang malaman kung ang isang inumin ay lubos na nagbibigay ng ion. Ang mga ito ay balanse ng ion, konsentrasyon ng sodium at ng asukal. Sandali lang, sinabi ko bang asukal? Ang ayon at sodium ay talagang kailangan ng ating katawan. Ngunit ano ang kinalaman ng asukal dito? Ang asukal sa pokari sweat ay nagsisilbing sasakyan sa pagpapabilis ng pagsipsip ng tubig. Dahil dito, mas mabilis na nakakabawi ang ating katawan mula sa dehydration kumpara sa pag-inom ng purong tubig. Ang pokari sweat ay nagbibigay ng ion o electrolytes. Nananatili ito sa ating katawan tulad ng body fluids at nagtitiyak ng maayos na hydration sa mas matagal na durasyon. Kaya ang mayat mayang pag-inom ng pokari sweat ang maaaring numero unong opsyon upang maiwasan ang pagkatuyo ng ating katawan. 
Maaari maging delikado ang taginit sa ating lahat. Ito ay maaari magdulot ng pananakit ng ulo, pamumulikat, at pananamlay maging ng malusog na tao. Ano ang ating magagawa upang manatiling malusog sa taginit? Ang tamang sagot ay hydration. Upang mapanatili ang tamang temperatura ng katawan, kailangan natin pagpawisan. Ngunit kung kulang tayo sa likido, ito ay magdudulot ng mas malaking problema na may kinalaman sa pagmetabolize ng electrolytes. Hindi lamang tuwing taginit ang hydration. Tuwing taglamig, pinalalakas ng sobrang init at tuyong kapaligiran ang influenza virus. Upang maiwasan ang dehydration, kailangan natin ng sapat na antas ng body fluids. Paano nga ba nabuo ang napakahusay na hydration agent na Pocari Sweat? Noong 1973, nagpunta sa business trip sa Mexico ang isang researcher na matagal na naghahanap ng mga makabagong inumin. Sumakit ang kanyang tiyan at ito ay nauwi sa dehydration at siya ay naospital doon. Sinabi ng kanyang doktor, kailangan niyang maibalik ang nawalang likido sa katawan niya para gumaling siya. Nang sandaling iyon, naalala niya ang ininom ng isang doktor matapos magsagawa ng operasyon. Ginamit niya ang ideyang ito para makagawa ng isang inumin at nabuo ang pokari sweat bilang inuming nagbibigay ng ayon. Gumawa tayo ng inuming mabuti sa kalusugan at kahihiligang inumin ng mga tao sa araw-araw. Ito ang moto ng Pocari Sweat na ngayon ay lubos ng tinatangkilik ng mga mamimili sa labing-anim bansa at rehiyon sa daigdig. Wow! Masasabi na natin ito ang pinakamahusay na ayon supplement drink sa buong mundo. Now, Relax as we listen to a very inspiring talk on cycles of life and how to embrace these changes in the cycle of life from no less than Miss Grace Eliasar. Miss Eliasar is a renowned author of books on The Soul Speaks and A Gift, A Spiritual Journey on Love. She is the woman behind La Bella Tagaytay, the emerging mixed-use residential development that features a holistic village, fully furnished affordable condominium units, health and wellness centers, and leisure living. I'm quite happy with the topic that we're going to discuss. And I was surprised when Tang told me it's all the bicycle enthusiasts. And that's why you called it the, the circle and the cycles of life. This is a very relevant topic now because what we are experiencing globally is actually part of the cycles of life. Just what do we mean by cycles? Actually, cycles and circles are synonymous term when it comes to uh, explanations of life. Um, if you look at nature, everything in nature is circular. In fact, when I was taking my drawing lessons uh, with a British teacher, uh, what he told me was, there is never a straight line in nature. And I was surprised because we were drawing the human body. And he said, you look at your eyebrows, it's, it's circular. Look at, if you draw uh, the arm, it's, uh, it's curved. So everything is curved. And um, he also supported it with an explanation that if you look at the earth from outer space or from at least uh, on a higher plane, um, what you see as a straight line, if you're standing on the Earth planet, is actually a curved line because Earth is circular. So now, what does that mean when it comes to life? If you look at nature, everything in nature has cycles, even our own life and death is a cycle. And if you look at everything that is part of nature, the trees, 
the ocean, the waves, the, everything is actually um, an organized system and it is not as it seems to be. If you look at the clouds, you see, oh my God, parang magulo to, no? Wala naman design. Actually, um, in chaos, there is order. And that is what we fail to see in nature and in our life. When we go through cycles of life, we think, and we're going through negative things in life, we think there is disorder. There is something wrong with what is happening in our lives. Actually, no. It is all part of the cycle. Um, we have seasons. We have uh, summer, autumn, winter, all of that. That's a cycle. This is based on order. Everything in nature is not as we, it seems to be. Like parang ano ba to? Parang magulo lang design. It was just designed sporadically. It is not. Cycles is part of the movement of life. If there is no movement, there is no life. If you look at the river or a lake, the moment the movement of the lake, the stream stops, the lake becomes stagnant. And that's the start of the death process. So the movement and cycles of life are important for us to continue living. Kailangan natin may movement tayo Kasi pag hindi tayo gumalaw, mag stagnate tayo and life starts to break down and eventually die. Ang buhay natin may cycles. Actually, we are, all of us are born on a certain sign, right? And these astrological um, zodiac signs are part of the cycles of life. This a birth process is part of the cycles of life because the constellations that are there and our life are all connected. Hindi pwedeng ihiwala yan. It is part of the energy system that is all over life itself. Now, cycles is necessary for us to have order, not only in nature, but pati sa ating buhay. When you say cycles, eventually you will have this vision in your mind that it's like waves, right? Cycles is like waves because that is the actual reality or uh, the molecular structure of life. So pagka may waves, if you look at the ocean, may waves, the wind is not a continuous flow of air. The wind comes in cycles. It sometimes is, it blows and then it retreats and then it blows and then it retreats. Cycle is a mandatory, um, shall we say, it's an absolute reality of life. So the moment we realize that life has cycles, matatanggap natin ang nangyayari sa ating buhay. Um, Ang nangyayari ngayon sa global pandemic natin is actually a cosmic cycle. Everything, we will go to science first, right? Okay. So Earth, ang Earth nagmumove sa kanyang axis by rotation. And that movement is our 24-hour day movement. Okay? And yet the Earth moves around the sun. That is a 365-day movement. That's a year. And the Earth on top of that is also moving on its axis. Axis means the center of energy. And yet the Earth's axis is tawilis ng konte. It's not like this. It's like this. And that movement is called a precision of the equinoxes. So, north natin. I am explaining this because you have to understand that what is happening globally is a cosmic event. Na ang ating globe, ang ating earth, e gumalaw sa axis. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng climate change. Nagkakaroon tayo ng pandemic. 
nagkakaroon tayo ng volcanic eruptions because the axis of the earth is moving and this happens every 2500 years so anong ibig sabihin nito kung ang physical earth natin is moving then collectively our global consciousness is also moving so that the last Last December, December 21, there was a tinatawag na sa grand conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. Those two biggest planets in our solar galaxy it, uh, brought about a renaissance. It is creating what is called a new age. It's birthing a new age just as it was 2,500 years ago when the same planets nag, nag-conjunct, nagpatong, ay napakaliwanag. Ito yung tinatawag 2,500 years ago as the star of Bethlehem. It again appeared December 21 of 2020 because it is heralding a new global consciousness for the entire Earth planet, including the cosmic cycles. So ito is a cycle. So that pag naintindihan natin itong movement ng Earth natin to, ang ibig sabihin lahat ng tao ay eh sumama at mag-flow sa movement ng axis. Anong ibig sabihin? yung ating centering of our own axis sa ating buhay, yan ay gagalaw. So ang ating lifestyle, ang ating values, the things we used to do before will now change. In short, we have to do a rebooting so that we maintain our balance. Now, are these cycles absolute? Meaning, um, hindi na pwede nating wala tayong mababago sa ating buhay? No. Cycles are not uh, fatalistic determined events. Cycles are there for you to understand what is going on with your own personal life, with the, with the planet evolution and the cosmic evolution. So that when you look at your astrological chart, whatever it is that is happening now is also part of an astrological cycles in your life. Do you know that even our body, uh, the regeneration of our cells, all of that have cycles. The bones regenerate every two years. Our blood regenerates every two months. Okay, the certain cells, 2 million cells in our body regenerates every two months. So, hindi pwedeng wala tayong cycle because as I said earlier, the moment in stop mo ang movement, there will be stagnation and stagnation is a prelude to death. When I say death, not necessarily physical death, but a death of certain portions in our lives. Um, astrological cycles is part of the human evolution because we are part of the constellation. Now, if you look at uh, the purpose of the cycles, as I said earlier, it's supposed to guide you on what to do and it is not a fatalistic event in your life. Now, how does that apply to one's life? Yung astrological cycles natin will tell us the impending o yung parating na cycle sa buhay natin. Dahil hindi tayo pwedeng walang negative at walang positive sa buhay because that is what is needed to create life. If you look at an ECG, ang, ang, ang symbol ng pusong tum- buhay is a cycle. It's up and down, up and down, up and down. Ibig sabihin, buhay yung tao. 
The moment it becomes a straight line, that means the person is dead, right? So when there is a cycle of up and down, be joyful, be glad, because you still have the gift of life. Now, what does one do when the cycle is up and when the cycle is down? Because these are important components of life. Right now, the global consciousness is in the cycle of downturn because of the global pandemic. Kung baga ang wave natin, dati tayo nasa taas, ngayon bumaba tayo sa crest, nasa ibaba tayo. And we, we are again waiting for the uphill climb on that wave sa upper crest so that the next cycle will be again a downward movement. How does one handle when one cycle is down? Easy. When you're going through the cycles of life, it's just like going and trekking, going to several mountains. Okay, you're trekking, going to a mountain. There's a big mountain, so patas. It seems like hindi mo na makita what's behind it, right? So you now look at your life. Ay, problema. What is happening in the world? Hindi ko na makita because you're down. The reason why you don't see where you're going is because you're on the down portion of the cycle. So what does one do? when one is in the down cycle, you have to go up. So that when you go up the crest of your cycle, of the wave, okay, you're able to see the path where you're going. You're on top of a mountain, so you look down and you see, ah, ito pala dapat ako dito dumaan. Hindi pala dito sa kaliwa, sa kanang pala. Because now I can see the below. How do you apply that going up so that you don't look at your problems in life as an impediment. You raise your vibration. You stay positive. You look at the joyful things in life. You don't get burdened by that impediment that is facing you because it is only part of the journey. You cannot go through the journey of life with the up, without the ups and downs. And that is how you uh, address the different cycles of life. When it's up, good, stay up, be happy. But when it's down, good, be happy. Why? Because that is just the backward movement for you to be able to get, harness the energy for a higher climb. Without, ito yung tinatawag natin sa nabuelo. Pag gusto mong tumalon ng malaking talon, umaatras ka muna para may buelo. That's all it is. So itong nangyayari sa atin sa mundo ngayon, na meron tayong COVID, na may nawawala ng trabaho, nawawala ng negosyo, nagkakaganito, meron namang nawawala ang buhay. Malungkot yon. That is actually really the most difficult of all the atras when you lose a loved one. But remember, I personally believe in the eternality of the soul. So that when you lose a person, you only lose the physical body and the presence in this lifetime. And because I believe in the eternality of the soul, it follows that I believe in reincarnation. So that, that losing of a person is just a way of surviving the eternal eternality of life. So that is how to handle when you lose a loved one during all these COVID times. Now, how do you apply that do sa mga nawawala ng trabaho? Reboot. Use the creative power of the infinite that is within you and think of what you can do to again generate whatever it is that you want to generate in your life. Because within you is the creative power of the infinite, which means it is an unlimited source of ideas. And I have personally experienced this in my life. Now, 
meron akong pinuntahan, meron akong tinayong negosyo, pero it sort of failed. Right? Then nagtayo ulit ako. Then again, it failed. Based on the world's uh, perception, ay nako, naging lugi yan. Ba't ganyan ang negosyong pinasok niyan? Laging lugi. But looking back, these 44 years of my life, and knowing all these principles of life, all those events were not failed events in my life. They were just stepping stones. It's sad that the world calls it a failure. We should just call it a, a hump that we're supposed to overcome because we're increasing our energy power for us to be able to attract what we want uh, from life, which is normally a bigger one. You know, when we go through life, we always want something more, right? But how do you attract the more if you do not have the energy force that is generated from your within? Because life is generated from the inside. You know that, why? Take out the soul, there's no life. The physical body has no life. And yet, the life that we're looking for is a life that is alive. But even on a dead body, I will have to uh, change my words, there is still life, but not the kind of life where we can interact. In a dead body, there is still called what is called enzyme. That enzyme is the life force even on dead bodies, because without the enzyme, the dead body will not decompose. So there you will see that there is no such thing as an absence of life. Now, itong cycles na to, na nangyayari sa mundo, dapat gamitin natin para ma-achieve natin ang ating goals. Because yung, yung cycle na ito is just a, shall we say, the dark force that will bring forth the white force. It's just like the birthing process. Na pagka, bago lumabas ang bata, you go through labor pains. Now, when, for those who understand the birthing process, when your baby is about to come out, that is not the, the way to concentrate on the pain. The mother usually concentrates on the push because she wants the baby to come out. She's not saying ang sakit and then just looks at the pain. She's, her focus is on the energy push so that the baby comes out. Yun ang dapat natin gawin ngayon sa ating mundo. We are on a cycle on a downtrend. Kailangan hindi tayo COVID, ng COVID, ng pinag-uusapan, sinong namatay, gano'n na karaming namatay. We are not negating the existence of that event. But we have to focus on what is coming out. Like a baby that's being born, the mother immediately forgets the pain when she sees the baby that is out. And there's tremendous joy because you brought up a new life. That's how we should look at COVID that we are just making boilo. And you know very well that right now, our life, lifestyles are all changing. Our values are changing. And we, if you don't look at it as a negative event, oh my God, you will see like it's a door opening for a better life. Ang kailangan ng mundo ngayon, is transformation. That is what is called the age of Aquarius. Nang galing tayo sa age of Pisces, which is unfortunately the age that brought about a lot of delusions because our heaven was made to be inaccessible. Kung kailan lang tayo mamamatay, tsaka tayo pupunta sa heaven. We have forgotten that the heaven we are looking for is the heaven you can create while living on earth. 
And that is what the age of Aquarius will show us. We will be given a new kind of empowerment, an empowerment of the self, where we look at the infinite as out there in the sky, where we have to beg for everything that we want from life. But the age of Aquarius will give us a new awareness that the power that is outside of us is also the power that is within us. The I amness, the life force that makes our heart beat even when we're sleeping. Yun ang ating nagpapatakbo ng ating lahat sa, sa katawan natin na binabago ang ating cells every two weeks, nire-repair so that we will experience the, the, the soundness and the vitality of life. Masyado nating this age of Pisces, nirelegate natin ang power outside of us. This is an age where we will start to see who we are as a person. Where did we come from? And knowing that, what are the tools that we have so that we can bring forth the kind of life that we want for ourselves and for our children? This is an age where all traditions will start to break down, including governments, including monarchies, including the old ways of doing things. We will become a new age of spirituality where we will now start to respect the beliefs of every person for as long as their beliefs do not do us harm. And in the respect and the acceptance of the uniqueness of each person, that is when we will create universal harmony. Universal harmony is not in achieving that we're all the same. We always think of harmony, even in relationships. Eh, pareho kami ng gusto sa buhay. Pareho aming kinakain. Parehong gusto namin pinapanood na sini. Pareho kami ang um, gustong magbakasyon. That's not harmony. Because eventually that will stagnate. Because it's too much sameness. But when you're able to accept the differences of each individual and accept them not as a resigned acceptance na, hey, wala na ako, eh. hindi ko na mabago, bayaan mo na, okay na lang siya, ganyan na lang siya. No, that's not the kind of acceptance we want. The acceptance we want is an, a total admiration of the uniqueness of that individual and total um, support for what he is or what she is as a person. That is when we achieve universal harmony. And this cycle of life, which is the age of Aquarius, will start that movement. It is a global consciousness. It is a global change. It is a cosmic cycle, just like our astrological cycles in life. Now, um, there are 12 zodiac signs. And yet that 12 zodiac signs are all within us. And every negative and positive of each cycle, of each astrological sign, is something that each one of us should develop. So right now, to be able to tap the axis of your life, there is a one um, modality that you can use, meditation. Because meditation is not religion. Meditation is common to all humanity. It is not telling you the dogmas of one religion versus the dogmas of another religion versus the rituals of one religion and versus the, the, the other religion pray. We have to find something that is common to humanity. And this is the cycle that we are in now. So let us ride this cycle by accepting events that are happening in our lives right now, personal, national, and global, and cosmic. 
And the moment we're able to accept, that means we are flowing with the energies of life. And how do you know that you are flowing with the energies of life? When you're able to stay positive, when you're able to see the good things of life despite the problem, when you're able to think creatively and come up with new ideas on how to earn, how to be happier, how to be enjoying each other despite social distancing. That is what is being taught to us now, that we don't need physical proximity. Hindi natin kailangan tabi-tabi tayo, mag-inuman tayo, magkasama tayo. No. What is being taught to us now is that in our physical distancing, we are more connected. And you see that. We are now able to talk to people via Zoom in China, in the U.S. And yet before, ang kausap lang natin, yung kamiting lang natin. So we are in already in a changing paradigm that in distance, is sometimes where you create the closeness because closeness is not a physical closeness that we are striving for. What we are striving for is spiritual and mental closeness where we are able to accept each other for who they are. And that acceptance is really the spiritual unity that we are all striving for. I hope I'm able to give some enlightenment on the cycles of life. And I hope that with this short talk that I gave, I have placed the seeds of transformation in your souls so that you will start your journey towards your inner selves and not an external journey. We all need to go within. It's a long journey. But I tell you, it's worth it. Thank you. Time is up for this week's Rise Up, Shape Up episode. Thank you, everyone, for your support. Rise Up, Shape Up is brought to you by the Philippine Sports Commission, Women in Sports. We would like to thank our partner, Pac4, and our event sponsor, Pocari Sweat. We'd also like to acknowledge the PSC Board of Commissioners, Chairman William I. Ramirez, Commissioners Arnold Agustin, Ramon Fernandez, Celia Kiram, and Charles Raymond Maxi. See you next week for our Women's Day celebration as we catch on some special moms whose role is so significant in the making of our athletes. Meantime, don't forget to follow us on our social media channels. Again, this is your host, Clarissa. Have a marvelous day ahead. Rise up and